Okay, good morning, gentlemen. Welcome back. After the holidays, we are now moving on to solving quadratic equations. Now, we have done quadratic equations or expressions in term 2, I believe, or 1, and I'm sure you would have forgotten. So, first of all, what does the word solve mean? We have done solving linear equations in the past as well. What does solving mean? Find what? Find. Yep, find the unknown. So what's the unknown in this case? X. X. So find the unknown for which the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. Yes? We all agree with that? What is an equation? So we've got three words here. Solving quadratic equations. So we know solve. What is an equation? Exactly, it has an equal sign. So it's not just an expression, 2x plus 3. It's equal to something. So the left-hand side, the expression is x plus 2 times x plus 3. What is it equal to? 0. So we have to solve it, means we have to find the values of x. So that if we sub those values in the left-hand side, the answer will be 0. Okay? So we remember now what solving means and what an equation is. Now, what is a quadratic equation? Why aren't these linear equations? This last lesson, last chapter, we all we just talked about linear, linear equations, linear graphs. What is why is it quadratic now? What's the difference? We've got equations now as well. The highest power is two. Exactly. Remember with linear equations, what was the highest power x could have? One. And in that case, the graph was a straight line. Straight line. What's the highest power of x here? Two. What's the highest power of x? Two. Two. What's the highest power of x here? How is it 2? If I expand it, x times x will give you x squared. Are you happy that they're all quadratics? Yeah. Yes? So we are solving which kind of equations? Quadratic equations. Because they're different to linear equations, do you reckon we'll have a different method of solving them as well? Yes. How did we solve the linear equation? Come on, how did we solve it? We graphed it, okay. And Or how did we solve it without a graph? Didn't we just do inverse operations, take everything to the right hand side yeah. and leave x or y on the left hand side? Yes? yes? However, the way we solve a quadratic is completely different. And these are the three steps. Step one, make sure the equation is in this general form. ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. All you need to remember is that there must be zero on one side, everything else on the other side. Can you manage that? No. Yes, so that's the first step. So, does it have all the terms on left hand side? Yes. All terms on left side? Yes. yes. Left side? Yes. Zero on the other? Yes. How about these two? Do not in standard. No. So, we first have to move everything to the left hand side, have zero on the right hand side, and then move on to step two. Is that clear? Then, if A is one, what's A? Coefficient of x squared. If A is 1, we use AB method to factorize. Now, we have done this before, but I'll give you a quick recap. So, is the coefficient of x squared 1? Yes? Yeah, yeah. Wake up. Is the coefficient of x squared 1? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, we can factorize them using AB method. Okay? These two, aren't they already factorized? Can you see we have one bracket times the other equal to 0? So, aren't they factorized already? Yeah. So, it's easy. Second step's already been done for them. So if we've done the first two steps, or the first two steps have already been done by the book, you move on to the third step using null factor law. And that's what I'm going to teach you today, null factor law. Because we've done factorizing, we've done rearranging, now we're doing null factor law. Okay, so let's look at this question. Is everything on the left-hand side? Zero on the right? Yeah. Yes. Is it factorized? Two brackets with the times in between? Yes. So I can move on to the next step. Null factor law. Null factor law is, it's such a simple and logical law. If I say, think of two numbers, so everyone think, it can be hard in the morning. Think of two numbers that times together to give you a zero. Everyone needs to think of two numbers that times together to give you a zero. Now, the numbers can be same or different. Can you give me your two numbers, please? Uh, negative two and three. How will negative 2 times 3 give you 0? The numbers that you've chosen must you <coughs> times together, excuse me, to give you 0. <coughs> Any two numbers in the whole wide world that give you 0 has nothing to do with this question. Yes? Anything that's multiplied by 0. 
So give me two numbers that times together. To give you zero, any two. Zero and five. Zero and five. Is zero times five zero? Yes. Give me all two numbers. One and zero. One and zero is zero. Give me two numbers that are the same and times together to give you zero. Zero and zero. Zero and zero. So what's common with all the answers? That all of them had at least one zero in it? Yes? Yeah. That's not fact law. That if two things have been times together to give you zero, don't at least one of them has to equal zero? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. So what we do is, we first face the board, we stop looking outside the window, and then focus. So that means either x plus 2 will be equal to zero, agree? Or x minus 3 equals 0. Do you all agree with me? We've just done this. I asked you to think of two numbers that times 2 gives you 0 and you all at least thought of one number that was 0. So then, if x is x plus 2 is equal to 0, what will x be equal to? 0. Negative 2? Solving, isn't it a linear equation now? So can I minus 2 both sides? And if x minus 3 is equal to 0, can I add plus 3? These are the two options you have. That means x can be either negative 2 or negative 3. Can they both be 0? Can both of these brackets be 0? Yes. See, what happens if I put x equals negative 2? Doesn't this become 0? So 0, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. So 0 times anything will give you 0. So is that an answer? If I put x equals 3, what, shouldn't this bracket become 0 then? 3 minus 3 is 0. So 0 times anything is 0. So we have solved this quadratic equation using null factor law. Null factor law is if two numbers are times to give you 0, at least one of them must be 0. And we just figured it out ourselves, didn't we? Make sense? Let's do the next one. So these are the answers. So the two possible solutions to this equation are x can either be negative 2 or 3. Let's move on to the next one. Is everything on one side 0 on the other? Is it factorized? Two things by times in it? So what's the third step? Use null factor law. Null factor law says if two things have been multiplied to equal 0, then either x equals 0 or x minus 11 is equal to 0. And now solve it. This is already an answer. How will I find x? If x take away 11 is 0, can I add 11 to both sides? What's x equal to? 11. <coughs> Make sense? Any questions so far? <coughs> now, first step, is everything on one side and zero on the other? Yes? Is it factorized? No. So look at the second step. Is the coefficient of x squared 1? Is the coefficient of x squared 1? Yes. Yes. So you can use AB method. AB method was, you should remember it, two numbers times to give you the last term, which is the constant term. Same two numbers added together to give you your middle term. So what are the different factors of 10? Factor base. 10 times 1? But the, is that going to give you 7? No. 5 times 2. Excellent. 5 times 2 is 10 and 5 plus 2 is 7. Yes? So what you can write this equation as x plus 5 in one bracket because 5 is your first factor and x plus 2 in the other bracket equals 0. Have we factorized it? Yes. Now can we use null factor law? Yes. yes. So either x plus 5 is equal to 0. So using null factor law or x plus 2 is equal to 0. Can I minus 5 from both sides? Yes? yes. x will be equal to negative 5. And can I make minus 2 from both sides? x will be equal to negative 2. You can just see the answer, the sign just flips. <coughs> Easy? Nothing hard. We've done factorizing before. Does it ring a bell now? Is it coming back to you? Great. Everything on one side? Zero on the other? Yes. Is the coefficient of x squared 1? Yes. What do I do then? Factorizing using? AB. AB method. Two numbers. Times to give you? Two. Add to give you? Two. Negative 3. 
So when you add them, you need a negative answer, but when you times, you need a positive answer. What are the different ways we can multiply numbers to get 2? So 2 times 1, but 2 plus 1 will be 3. How about negative 2 and negative 1? Does that give us positive 2? And what's negative 2 plus negative 1? Negative 3. Right? So what are our numbers? Negative 2, negative 1. So we can factorize this as x because it's negative 2. Minus 2 in one bracket. Second number is negative 1. So minus 1 equals 0. Have we factorized it using every method? Now we move on to null factor law. Because the times to give us 0. So using <coughs> null factor law x minus 2 equals 0 or x minus 1 equals 0. Can I add 2 to both sides? So I get x equals 2. Can I add 1 to both sides? I get x equals 1. So 2 comma 1 are the 2 answers. See how many answers are we getting for a quadratic? 2. Will a quadratic always have 2 answers? Think about it. Can it have less than 2 answers? Can it have more than 2 answers? Can it? What's the highest power of x in a linear equation? 1. How many answers were we getting? 1. What's the highest power in this equation? Well, how many answers are we getting? So think about it. Is it related? When we get to graphs, I'll, I'll talk about it in more detail. Now, the first step hasn't been satisfied. They do not equal to 0. So I've got two options. I can either move these two terms to the right hand side, or I can move 2x to the other side. Which one's sensible and why? <coughs> if I move these two, I'm moving two terms, so I'm doing the twice the amount of work, and I'm making my x squared negative. Do I want my x squared to be negative? No. What do I want the x squared to have? A coefficient of? One. one. So to move the 2x to the other side, we do the opposite. Because this is positive 2x, what's the opposite of plus 2x? Minus. Minus. So what I do to one side, I must do to the other. Now, like terms, 10x take away 2x is? 8x. And 2x take away 2x is 0. Now, factorizing. Do I need to use non factor law? It's, it's, can I, sorry, do I need to use AB method? Does it have three terms? No, it doesn't have three terms. Remember factorizing in term 1? What is the first step for any factorization? Look for a? Look for a common? Factor. Does it have a common factor? X is common to both? So X squared. What remains? X. What remains here? X. We are factorizing. We didn't need to use the AB method because this doesn't have three terms. Remember for AB method we need three terms. An X squared term, an X term and a constant term. Here we only have two terms so we can use just common factor. Now, is it two th things times together to give us a zero? So can I use the null factor law? Yes? So, x equals zero because that's our first factor. Or, x plus 8 equals zero. So this is one of our answers, x equals zero. How will I move the 8 to the other side? It's plus 8. Minus 8. Minus 8. Well done. So x equals negative 8. Make sense? Last question. Again, it's not in the standard form. We don't have 0 on this side, so I need to move this to the left hand side. So this is negative 11x. What's the opposite of negative 11x? 11. Yep. Yeah. So can I add 11x to both sides? So x squared, and then like terms. 11x take away x is? 10x. And 11x take away 11x is 0. How many terms does this have? 3. Can I use? AB method? Great. Two numbers times to give you 21. Same numbers add to give you 10. What are the numbers? 7 and 3. Yes? So I'll write them as x plus 7 in one bracket, x plus 3 in the other, equals 0. And then we use which law? No. No. Yeah. NFL. NFL. Either this equals 0 or that equals 0. Therefore, what do I do to get rid of the 7? 
So x equals negative 7 and negative 3. These are the two answers. When we do sketching quadratics, we'll figure out what these answers mean and why do we get two answers maximum. Not all quadratics will have two answers. Let's do a quick question with this one. Let's figure this out. Can I use every method? Yes. Two numbers times to give you four, add to give you four. Two and two? Yes? Yeah. So what will I get? X plus two? X plus two. Can I use null factor law? Yes? Yeah. So x plus 2 is equal to 0 or x plus 2 is equal to 0? Will I just get the same answer? Do I even need to write that? So x is equal to negative 2. So how many answers did I get? 1. So does the quadratic need to have two answers always? No. Can it have one answer? Can it have no answers? No. Yes, it can have no answers. Can it have more than two answers? No. No, we won't. No. And we'll talk about that when we do a graph. Get on with your work, unless you have any questions. Okay. Right.